works as a security consultant at Payatu Software Labs, and he loves finding security flaws in the Microsoft Edge browser. And um, incidentally, this is the uh, topic for this next talk. So please give a big round of applause to Nikhil Mittal. So, welcome to the talk, Breaking Microsoft Edge Extension Security Policies. My name is Nikhil. I work at Payadu Labs, and I'm into web and browser vulnerability research. So, to start with this presentation, I would like to know how many of you use browser extensions in general? Like, oh, nice. So many hands. Okay. So, a browser extension is something that extends the functionality of a web browser. Uh, we have a typ typical examples like at Block Plus, which I think most of the people use to uh, block the ads on some certain sites like YouTube and Grammarly and some sort of password managers as well. So these extensions are capable of managing most of your data because they can handle the cookies, bookmarks, storage, passwords, history, and whatnot. So that being said, we all have to agree on a point that these extensions are powerful because they can deal with your cookies, bookmarks, and other sensitive information in the browsers. So here's how simple Adblock Plus extension looks like on Microsoft Edge, uh, which is pretty much doing his job. Now, uh, have you ever tried to figure out what this extension is capable of doing in your browser? Oh, nice. So if you look at the settings, here, are, here we have a couple of permissions, which I, which I have listed down on the next slide. So a simple Adblock Plus extension can read and change content on websites that you visit. It can read and change your favorites. It can see the websites you visit. It can read and change anything you send or receive, and it can also store uh, personal browsing data on your browser, and it can also display notifications as well. So there are so many things uh, a simple adblock bus extension can able to do in your browser. So, so you might ask, like, how browsers recognize these permissions? Like, an extension is able to do is able to do so many things in my browser, but how does browser recognize, like, where are these permissions coming from? So here's a permission model in browser, browser extensions. So under the source of every extensions, we have a file called as manifest.json. And inside a manifest.json file, we have a permission array. So here's a quick example of a permission array where we have some permissions. So the first one is https www.google.com, which we'll see right after this slide. The next permission we have is bookmark, and cookies, history, storage, and tabs. So let's suppose a, book, a extension has a permissions with the bookmark and cookies. So that means that extension can handle your bookmarks. It can manipulate them. It can edit them. It can remove them and whatnot. So the same goes with the cookies history as well. And there are other important permissions uh, as well uh, available for the browsers. So apart from these uh, permissions, the most interesting permission that I was looking for is the host access permissions. So a host access permission is something that defines on which certain domains your browser extensions should be able to run. So in this case, uh, let's suppose we have assigned permissions to http www.google.com. So that means this extension should be able to run on google.com only, not even the subdomain that is uh, developer.google.com or mail.google.com. So this you can also verify with the tiny box that says, this is allowed to read and change content on some sites, www.google.com. Now, the second permission we could have in this here is http asterisk.google.com. So basically, this also covers the subdomains as well. And the third possible permission we can have is asterisk colon slash slash asterisk dot google dot com. So basically this says now not only I'll work on google dot com, but 
uh, basically on all the protocols as well, which is HTTP, HTTPS, might be FTP. That belongs to the particular domain. So apart from these three permissions, uh, we have the another permission in, in the row, which is all underscore URLs. This permission is so special because once a browser extension is assigned to all URL, all underscore URL permissions, that can execute JavaScript code on every uh, domain that you visit. So let's suppose you are on google.com or maybe you're on bing.com or anything else, it will work on most probably on every domain. But there are a few restrictions with the all underscore URLs permissions. That is, it cannot run on privileged pages. So a privileged page in browser is something that contains uh, some sort of sensitive settings and your browser data. So you might share off Chrome slash LS settings, which contains the password manager for Chrome, and also uh, you can identify the credit card and debit card information on Chrome slash LS settings as well. So you can imagine a situation one, once an extension is able to run a JavaScript code on Chrome settings page, then it can probably read or it can steal all of your passwords and credit and debit card information as well. So on the edge, we have a similar page, which is about.flex. So here you can see once extension with all underscore URL permission is assigned, it can read and change content on website you visit as per the edge. So here's a quick snap of about.flex and edge. And uh, so if you look at the first part, you will figure out there are a few important permissions, like you can enable Adobe Flash Player, you can also enable ex developer features, and also you can enable and disable allow un uh, unrestricted memory consumption for the web pages as well. And it also has some standard previews features, like you can enable, disable some experimental JavaScript features as well. So now you can imagine uh, the sensitivity of this page uh, contains okay, so let's build a quick. Uh, let's quickly build extensions so that will break most of the things in Edge. So, as I said, every extension has a manifest.json file which has all the permission and other configurations. The second file that we will be needing is popup.html. So popup.html is nothing, but it's just an interface for the browser extension. So basically, you might have noticed as soon as you click on uh, any of the browser extension, a pop-up appears on your window for that contains some sort of functions. That is nothing but just a popup.html file. And then again, we have a popup.js, which, uh, which has all the JavaScript code that executes according to the actions chosen by the popup.html. So this is how our extension should have looked uh, in, on the edge. So we have seen a tiny Microsoft logo. And as soon as you click on it, click on it a pop-up will appear, which says, I am the evil extension. And I have two options. The first one is open. The second one is execute. So as soon as you click on the open button, what it does is it will load google.com on the browser. And as soon as you click on the execute button, it will just alert one for you. So basically, so basically the interface is written in popup.html. And again, as soon as you click on execute, and so the work is done by popup.js. So let's quickly look at the source code for the manifest.json file. The thing to notice here is that you can figure out the permissions, permission array on line number 10, which is set to http colon slash slash www.google.com. That means it's clear that this extension should be able to run on google.com only. I mean, not on the subdomains even. So, as a source code for the popup.html, which is just a simple HTML file that has two buttons. The first one is open, the second one is execute, and it has a popup.js at the end. So here we have the popup.js. So in very brief manner, what it does is, as soon as you click on the open button, it loads google.com, and as soon as you click on the execute button, it calls the JavaScript, it, call, it alerts documented domain for you. So there are so many APIs available for the browser extensions that you can use, like 
history API and some sort of proxies API, tabs API. But for me, this tabs API was so interesting because uh, it allows you to play with different tabs. Like it has some uh, it has some function uh, methods inside like tabs dot create. So what it does is it allows you to create a new tab with any arbitrary domain, and it also has tabs dot update. And what it does is it allows you to update the update the page with the next URI. And tabs dot duplicate is also important because it allows you to make a exact replica of a already open tab. The next permission, the next method is tabs dot execute script. So this is pretty simple. This allow this is allowed you to execute JavaScript code. And tabs dot hide and tabs dot relate, which is pretty easy. So and there are so many other methods as well. So out of them, the most interesting one for me was create and update and also the duplicate method. So let's see if you want to load a new, uh, so let's see if you want to load bing.com on a new tab using a browser extension. So you can just write this five lines of code uh, that says, that calls browser.tabs.create and then it passes a URL which is https www.google.com. So this is as per the documentation, and this is for the good boys, like not for us. So as an evil mind, like I was interesting to know, like what would happen if I try to load local files instead of uh, a normal domain? So then I replaced the, U the Bing URL with a particular local file URI to try to figure out like how browser will treat it. Will it open it or not. So, so the next moment, Edge gives me this nice error like, okay, I can't reach this page. And you make sure you have got the right web address. That is ms-browser-extension, and then the path for the extension, and it appends the file you are a path in the last. So basically, Edge assumes that this is a relative path, and I'm going to add it with the extension path, and I'm going to try, and I'm going to open it. So since that part, that particular part doesn't exist, it gives an gives us an error. So uh, this is not this is not a thing with uh, the extension as well, but this is a journal like. Uh, any of the browser, they don't allow you to load local files at any cost because this might lead an issue to steal your local system's files. So you can see the image in the Edge and Chrome browsers. So here I'm trying to load local files using the JavaScript. So every time it says, okay, we are not uh, allowed to do that because uh, we care about our users and we will protect them. So since we figured out this browser.tabs.create method was not working for us. The next method that I was looking for, the update. So I tried the same thing with the update method and somehow it worked for me. So next, once I, was, once I figured out, okay, now I can load the local files. Now I want to load the privileged pages because they are also interesting for me. And it was also working fine for me at the moment. So here you can see, as soon as you click on the open button, browser loads a local file for me and also a privileged page on Edge. So I've reported this bug to Microsoft, but and they quickly responded back to me saying, we don't support download API, so even if you load the local files, you have no way to steal it. Like You literally cannot do anything by loading the local files, and we are not going to fix it. So I said, okay, let's do it another way. So the next moment the idea came to my mind is to use the JavaScript URI. A JavaScript URI is something that starts with the JavaScript protocol. It has a particular syntax, like first JavaScript, and then colon, and then the JavaScript code. Here we have a simple examples, like as soon as the ahref JavaScript colon alert one, it gets rendered in the browser, and you click on the test, a JavaScript code will pop up on your browser. So the good thing about the JavaScript URI is that they execute in the main domain's reference unlike the data URIs. So you can look into the image. We have JavaScript URI and the data URIs as well that points to 
alert document at domain and one javascript uri says i'm on html.squarefree.com while the data uri say the null domain so basically uh, the data uri was supposed to execute on the main domain's reference a couple of years back but then it creates a, lo a lot of mess with the browser so browser vendors they decided to execute in the null domain reference to just to make it to safe so at this point of time, I decided, okay, uh, JavaScript URIs are like the be best candidate for us, so why not to try it? So I've tried the same uh, JavaScript URI with browser.tabs.create, and again, it was it doesn't work for me. But again, we have a friend or called update method. And I've tried the same thing with the JavaScript URI that points to browser.tabs.update, which again calls JavaScript call an alert, document or domain, and it worked for me this time. So you can figure out with this picture, this extension should have able to run on google.com, and now we are on a bing.com, and if you click on the open button, we have a JavaScript code execution on bing.com. Like, this is how bad it was, because that's a total violation of the privacy because the user believes that this extension shouldn't able to run on the other domain expect the google.com. So this was again reported to the Microsoft saying, okay, so uh, in the last time I've reported like I'm able to load the local files, but you said I'm not going to fix it. And now we have a JavaScript code execution as well. So then again, they said, okay, like we got your concern. We understand what we understood what you're trying to say, but can you also alert users' cookies as well? Like, is it possible to steal the users' cookies? Then I said, okay, why not? You so instead of document or domain, you can just use document or cookie to pop up users' cookies as well. So, since we have host perm host access permission bypass on Edge, so we can steal Google emails even Facebook data or anything like that. So to demonstrate this attack, let's suppose we have a simple Google email which says, I'm a secret email and I have some coupon code for $1,000 cashback and there we have a, some random coupon code. So to demonstrate this attack, you can see I'm using browser.tabs.update that points to a certain JavaScript URI and what it does is it, create, it fetches the particular email with with a particular ID and opens a new tab and send it to the leak.html. And further, what leak.html does is it copies the value from location.hash and write it into the do write it onto the page. So as soon as you click on uh, the open button, if you are on mail.google.com, it will steal the particular email and display it back on the attacker's domain. So this is how I was able to steal the Google emails. So this proof of concept was sent to the Microsoft. And the same thing with the local files as well. Like I, I thought, okay, now it's working for the domain. Now what if we tried with same thing with the local files as well? So yeah, in this case, it, was, it worked as well. So if you remember in the last in the past when we were able to load local files, but Microsoft says, okay, we are not going to fix it because we don't support download API. And now we have a JavaScript code execution on local files as well. So we can chain both of these bugs to steal the local files as well. So here's a simple proof of concept. So at the first, what we are doing is browser.tabs.update, but that points to a file URI. And again, browser.tabs.update, that points to a JavaScript URI. So Microsoft was like, okay, now we have to fix. <laughs> but what is next? So, so far we have JavaScript code execution on local files. We also have host access permission bypass. Now what is next? So the next thing that came to my mind is always the privileged pages, as I ex already explained the sensitivity of the privileged pages. So. So the next moment I was so excited that this will work on the privileged pages as well. So again, I wrote this five line of code and tried to execute in reference to about.flags. 
and surprisingly it was not it wasn't working for me and i was so surprised like why this is not working and like shaking my head like what is wrong so the next moment i was i was trying to figure out what is wrong with this implementation like why it is not working maybe there are some errors in the console so i try to open the developer console to figure out the possible errors but you can see there is no such errors at all so the reason for that is most of the pages like the sensitive pages in the browsers like chrome firefox and even in on the edge are protected with the csp to make sure there shouldn't be any javascript code execution but we cannot see any csp errors here as well which was pretty strange for me so then again i asked to myself like why this black magic is not working on privileged pages even when we don't have the csp error maybe this time edge is playing smart or do we have any other way to load about dot flags in edge then the next idea that came to my mind is to use the res protocol so res protocol is something that is used to fetch some certain of resources from a module so instead of about dot flags we can call res colon slash slash html dot dll slash flag dot stm and the next moment it worked <laughs> so 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 this way we have now javascript code execution on privileged pages as well which is pretty bad so once you have javascript code execution on privileged pages you can enable and disable adobe flash player and there are other method which we have other uh, possible options which we have already discussed can also be possible with with the same type with the same thing so again what we need to do is to call browser.tabs.update that points to is html.dll/flags.htm and again a file again some sort of javascript uri to uh, fetch get element by id and then click on it so it will toggle uh, the adobe flash player setting on the edge again what is next so this was pretty enough for me but again like i was trying to figure out if we can do something else something else as well and then i stuck with the reading mode so a reading mode is, is a feature implemented in edge which renders a page in a way that is like kind of pretty easy to read so in this process edge makes sure that there shouldn't be any javascript code ex execution on the page the main purpose for reading mode is that to provide the users to provide a simplified page to the users so basically there should not be any advertisement or something like that so for that reason browser vendors they make sure there shouldn't be any Java, javascript code execution on reading mode and there was one bug with the reading mode as well like you cannot put any document in the reader mode until unless browser identified it identify it its complete complexity but you can append the read colon protocol in the in the first and then the url that points to some certain of domain and then edge will load the particular resources in the reading mode as well so fortunately i tried the same attack on the reading mode as well but since the reading mode was protected with a certain csp and then so you can see the csp error which says we do not allow inline script and it will be blocked by the edge so uh, reading mode was kind of safe uh, at least for uh, for the test cases but in some certain test cases it worked for me but i was not able to i was not able to re reproduce it further so that's why i marked it marked it as safe the other possible features we can have is the javascript code execution on other extension pages like again you can imagine a situation we have you can imagine a situation we when one extension is able to disable other, another extension in browser like how bad it will be so again now we are on a internal page that belongs to adblock plus and if we try to run our extension on this page then again we have a csp violation issues so yeah that was safe the next thing was some csp privilege issues because the host permission will not work if there is any csp error 
So, next I try to figure out if we can use uh, the execute script API to figure out how they deal with this ESP. So, let's, uh, let's assume we have a page where the CSP is implemented properly and uh, we have a host permission for the same. So, you can, f you can see the code where we are saying the content security policy which is set to default SRC self and we are using browser.tabs.execute script which says code and then where we have to pass the JavaScript code which is just simple alert document.domain. So, the way extensions deal with uh, the CSP is that most of the browsers they will allow JavaScript uh, JavaScript from any extensions until unless they will try to change the DOM, DOM of particular DOM tree of particular document. So, let's suppose we have the first example right here. Uh, in this case, so as I said, let's assume we are on a page page which has a perfect perfectly CSP in place like this, and we try to ch change the DOM for the particular page. So. The possible base we have is either we can use document.write or we can use document.body.innerhtml and then certain JavaScript code. And then the other another possible we have way we have is to generate a random element and then write inside it. So all these ways to manipulate a particular DOM tree on a on a CSP protected page was not allowed by most of the browsers like Firefox and Chrome, but it was not protected in case of edge, like the execute script API is straightforward as execute any of the JavaScript code on any domain, whether you try to change on, whether you try to change the DOM on a CSP protected page or not, like it doesn't matter for it. So, to conclude with this presentation is that uh, age, age extensions are still in development. Most of the APIs are not supported till the time because uh, and the edge that it has moved to the new chromium based browser as well so i'm not sure whether they are still developing extensions api or not but the active tab is one of the interested permission to work on because it allows you to execute javascript code on the current on the current domain so if you are able to perform the same sort of the same attack with active tab, tab api as well so pretty much you can have all I, what I presented here as well. So Microsoft, they have dis, they finally decided to fix this bug in March 19 update uh, with the highest possible bounty they have with the CV 2019-0678. Yeah, that's it. Questions? So thank you, Nikhil, for uh, an interesting talk. Uh, if you have questions about the talk, we have three microphones, one, two, and three in each one of the aisles. If you have a question, please come up to the microphone. We'll start from microphone number three. Hi. Uh, hi, and thank you for the interesting uh, talk. I have one question. Um, is this back or is this API um, also relevant for the, new uh, for the new Edge coming in January based on Chromium Engine? No, I guess so. The APIs are same, but since the new the new edge is running on Chrome, so they they will not support this API based because of uh, they use some uh, others calling conventions. I guess I believe. Okay, is that answer your question? Uh, yeah, but I have a second one. Um, yeah, go for it. Okay, and um, the second one is um, you tried to open um, the pages via the RES protocol, mm -hmm. but um, the functionality of those pages, um, is it also handled by Edge while opening it um, through the RES protocol, not about the about protocol? Yes, I guess. Okay, yeah. we are also working. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any more questions from the crowd or from the internet? Okay, then another round of applause for Nikhil for a great talk. Thank you.